Hi, in this video, we would learn about how steroid hormone works. So, steroid hormones are actually produced from the adrenal cortex or the gonads. Now, the steroid hormones are generally glucocorticoids, mineralocorticoids, androgens, estrogens, progesterone, etc. Now, let's take a particular example like from one of these steroids and try to understand its mode of action at the cellular and molecular level. But if you don't know that how these steroids are synthesized inside our body, then you should watch my other video which is in the playlist and the link is given at the end of this video. So let's talk about puberty. In case of females, the breast size increased after the puberty and it is due to the uh, effect of estrogen. Now let's see at molecular level how this physiological phenomena that means breast size increase is triggered by estrogen. So inside the breast just to give you a sense of the anatomy there are several lobules and there are uh, milk ducts, there are majorly adipose tissues. These things increase in size as a female is uh, crossing her puberty and going to adolescence. Now let's talk about how estrogen can work at a cellular level. So let's talk about one breast cell, a cell of a epithelial cell of the lobule and let's see how its size would be modulated with the help of estrogen. So estrogen like many other steroid hormones work with the help of intracellular receptors. So what are intracellular receptors? As the name suggests, these are present in the internal side of the cell. They are not displayed on the membrane surface. Now, they could be present in cytoplasm and most of the steroid hormone receptors are present in the cytoplasm and on demand, when the ligand is present, they move to the nucleus. Now, let's look at the structure of the steroid hormone receptor. So, it has a ligand binding domain which binds to the steroid hormone. It has a DNA binding domain which binds to the response element and it has some activation domain known as AF1 and AF2. So from the uh, gene when it is transcribed its roughly protein structure look like this and in the DNA binding domain there are defined motifs which help to bind the DNA in a sequence specific manner and mostly these motifs are zinc finger motifs. We would look at it in details. Okay. So let's look at the structure again. So here you have a, quite a lot of domains and this is a segment of the DNA which shows this kind of uh, uh, this kind of organization. So the transcription activation uh, function 1 and transcription activation function 2 domains help in transcriptional activity while ligand binding activation ligand binding domain first of all binds to the ligand and also help in dimerization. We would understand that why dimerization is important in a second and ultimately DNA binding domain has the function of DNA binding. So all of these things give rise to the protein which is the uh, intracellular receptor, the steroid hormone receptor which is able to bind to the ligand. Now let's look at how zinc finger motif which is present in the DNA binding domain of this receptor or steroid hormone receptor can bind to the DNA. Now in the zinc finger motif the zinc, moiety, uh, the zinc moiety is coordinated by several residues such as cysteine or histidine. But there are amino acids which are protruding out from the zinc finger motif which forms hydrogen bond with the base pairs of DNA in the major group. Now, this kind of signaling is very different from other signaling pathways such as MAP kinase signaling pathway where the ligand binds and several intracellular cascade gives rise to a signal which is going to the nucleus. Here, the ligand binds to the receptor and the re receptor ligand activated complex directly moves to the nucleus instead of the uh, other messengers. So here, normally, when the um, ligand is not present, for example, in this situation, the estrogen is not present or estrogen is low level, that situation, the intracellular receptor or the estrogen receptor is actually wrapped around by a heat shock protein 90 in an unfolded state. Now, when the ligand binds, this heat shock protein 90 releases this uh, intracellular receptor and it can now move to the nucleus where it can bind to specific response element present on the DNA. 
and these response elements are known as hormone response element in this case since it's estrogen we are talking about so it would be estrogen response element and that might lead to transcriptional activation we would look at what genes are transcribed and how they are relevant for in this particular physiological process of breast development now inside the dna like on the dna there are sequences which are hexameric sequences sparsed by random nucleotides these are known as the hormone binding element or hormone response elements in this case it is estrogen res response element now the zinc finger domains of these um, estrogen receptor would bind to that hormone receptor element with specific hydrogen bonding in the major groove of the dna and two of these uh, monomeric units of the estrogen receptor element would dimerize using the ligand binding domain and ultimately that would lead to transcription of several genes out of many genes that are transcribed few remarkable are c meek cyclin d1 etc all of them regulate cell cycle and cell growth and that is how we can understand how estrogen can modulate to um, orchestrate the regul or regulate the development of the secondary sexual characteristics in females so that is how we understand how the Mo mechanism of action of a steroid hormone is very different from the normal other proteinaceous hormones but in the steroid hormones itself the which uses the intracellular receptor there is another type of intracellular receptor which is already bound to the dna and the ligand just enters and bind to the receptor and mostly thyroid hormone receptor liver x receptor retinoic acid receptor these are those kind of category when i talk about thyroid hormone mechanism of action i would be talking about all of these in very much details so please check the playlist for that now what we wanted to tell you that the growth the growth factor signaling pathway which are generally map kinase pathway or pi3 akt pathway those signaling pathway have several steps several kinases associated with it so the advantage is you can modulate that pathway at several levels but here the nuclear receptor signaling is time saving it's for quick responses and but the downside of it it doesn't have a property of signal amplification but both the signaling pathways if we compare we can understand their pros and cons and in this case we learned that the steroid hormone receptors are intracellular receptors and they directly bind to the um DNA in hormone response element upon the ligand binding. So I hope you understand the mechanism. I hope you like this video. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And please make sure you comment me in the video. Your comments give me so much positive motivation to make more videos like this. Thank you.